All right, so the last segment, let's just talk about some of those maintenance items in a little bit more detail, uh, calibration and data logging. So remember the three-step process, fresh air cow, pump stall, bump check. If you do those manually every time, you'll have a good experience with your gas detection. Again, you also have your uh, Autoray 2 calibration station, so that's really the easiest way to do it. Uh, when the sensors are not reading properly, uh, calibration will adjust their accuracy. So make sure you're using the proper calibration gases, regulators, and tubing. Again, it's, it's somewhat silly that a 50 cent piece of tubing can stop you in your tracks, but if you don't have a way to get the gas out of the regulator and into the instrument, we're not getting a good delivery. Uh, you'd be surprised at just a little bit of dilution from some fresh air getting mixed in will throw the whole thing off. So make sure you've got good connections every time you're calibrating the instruments. And then I've always said to calibrate the meters monthly. Uh, each different manufacturer kind of states a different frequency for calibration, but the one thing that they all agree to is that bump check before each day's use. So I can't stress that enough. Okay. And then again, make sure your time and date are correct because when the meter time stamps the last date of calibration, it's going off the time and date in the meter. So if you're going through that warm up sequence, if you see the time and dates off, either just fix it or go to your gas meter guru and, and let them know that the time and date's wrong so that they can fix it. Okay. So remember, you've got a lot of different choices when it comes to calibration gases. Uh, we plugged you into a size of cylinder that we thought would be appropriate for the number of instruments that we're starting with, but as your instrument fleet grows, we may want to go to larger cylinders so they last longer. And something I pointed out earlier is your HCN calibration runs a little bit longer, actually almost twice as long as the calibration on your multi-ray, your four gas PID. So just expect that you'll run through the HCN gas faster than you will the other two cylinders, okay? And then, again, the regulator is so important. If you're always using your auto ray two cradles, you've made the investment, so I would just use your auto ray two cradles. If for some reason you need to do a manual calibration, meaning you're gonna get into the menus and follow the bouncing ball, make sure you're using the right regulator. You need that standard flow rate regulator to calibrate a diffusion style instrument. And with a pumped instrument, you can use the demand flow regulator. So just make sure you've chosen the right regulator. And again, it's just as easy to just use your, your auto rate too. Uh, calibrate with your auto rate too. Uh, you've made the purchase, so I would just use that. So while the meter is off, you'll cradle the instrument. It's gonna go in upside down. You'll close down that top hood. The two lights will start to flash orange until it's fully warmed up. And then they'll glow steady. And then you just pick which one you wanna do, either uh, a bump check or a calibration. And just caution that you only need to push the button for one full second. Uh, there is a little bit of a delay when you push the bump button uh, you'll push it for one full second and then let go. It appears nothing is happening. And I've seen some of my customers will push and hold the button even longer. But that's the way that you put the cradle in communication mode if you wanted your cradle to talk to a computer. So one second press and then let go and it will start the sequence. Okay. And then uh, depending on how you guys want to mount these, you could mount them on the bulkhead in your rigs, but we also have the option to put these in a case. And so this is our single cradle case. You can see we just mounted a cradle right to this platform and then your calibration gases would store underneath. So this would be another option for you if you wanted to store your cradle in a Pelican case and we call this in case calibration. So when you come up here at the end, take a look at the case, see if that's something that you guys would be interested in. And that is available exclusively from Allsafe Industries. And then the last thing to talk about here before we get into wireless is the data logging. Again, I can't stress the importance of just getting in the habit of downloading those data files, start to accumulate a record. It just shows that the department is properly maintaining its equipment and you never know when you may need to call on that data for a run that you had performed and then is being challenged by an outside party. So I've just always made mention to 
uh, store your data log files. It's just good record keeping technique. You will need a program called ProRay Studio 2. You can download it free off uh, raysystems.com or, or you have a CD that came in the box and you can just load it up. It's just not many new computers come with CD bays uh, and the latest greatest version would be on the website. So that's usually the easiest is just download ProRay Studio 2 straight from the website so that you can download data and reconfigure both your instruments and your cradles. Okay. So advanced maintenance, uh, the sensors in your instruments, like I passed around earlier, they won't last forever. They will eventually wear out just from being exposed to gas or they've just been in service so long that the, uh, the electrolyte won't respond to gas anymore. And so eventually you will need to replace those items. It used to be that we would replace batteries from time to time, but I can honestly tell you these new lithium ion batteries, we're just not seeing customers purchase these. The uh, new multi-rays came out in 2012, and I just haven't seen customers buy those batteries. And now it's been six years. So pretty confident in saying you won't change batteries very frequently, uh, but you will change the sensors. Uh, so if the sensor won't pass calibration and it's past the expiration date, it's just time to purchase a new one. If a sensor fails prior to the expiration date, then that means the factory would owe us a new sensor and you guys just want to call All Safe Industries. We'll be able to process that warranty sensor faster for you than trying to contact the factory directly. Um, and recently the sensor warranties have been extended. So some of the sensors now carry a three year warranty. So uh, within that first three years, if you have any sensor trouble, check with us first before we purchase a new one. But once you've passed the warranty date, doesn't mean the sensor's bad, it just means when it does fail, it's time to buy a new one. Okay. So getting into the uh, sensors is fairly easy. You would have to remove the yellow rubber boot. And then I always recommend removing the battery. Uh, you want to take power off the instrument when anytime you're disconnecting things from the circuit board. Uh, then there's four screws on the back of the multi-ray. The four screws at the top will release the sensor compartment. Uh, you'll remove that sensor cover and then you'll be staring down at your pump module. Well, your pump module is actually attached to the piece that you'll remove and then the five sensors that are installed inside. And you'll literally just unplug the bad one, plug in the new one, and then put everything back together and then recalibrate the instrument. Um, anytime you change out a sensor, you need to recalibrate the instrument so that it knows you've added a brand new fresh sensor because it's got to go and adjust those, uh, uh, adjust the current on the sensor because now it's a brand new sensor versus the old one you took out which was near the end of its useful life. So you'll always run a calibration when you've changed out your sensors. Okay. Same for your Toxiray Pro, very simple. Uh, remove the rubber boot, unscrew the sensor cap that's over the sensor, pull the sensor out, plug the new sensor in and recalibrate. Very simple to do. And again, this shouldn't need to be done. Well, it's a one year warranty on your HCN. And like I say, uh, a mixture of warranties on your multi-ray sensors, but some of them three years. So that will be enough time where you may need to call and say, how do I do that again? And it's in the book, or you can just call us and we'll walk you through it on the phone. So then the last thing we'll talk about before we actually demonstrate how to use the Autoray 2 cradle is wireless gas detection. So a complete wireless system contains a few different parts to it. The first part being a host computer with a Raylink 3 radio acting as your host radio. Then of course you'd have your wireless devices and again the the, the multi-ray light and the Toxiray Pros that you guys purchased are wireless. We're just waiting for the budget to come around to add the other components. Uh, then you would need another Raylink 3 to be your remote radio that's out by the instruments. And then this Raylink 3 would feed back to the Raylink 3 that's connected to your host computer. And that's what establishes that communication. That's a two mile range. And that can be extended by adding additional Raylink 3s as repeaters. And we can do that three times. So we could take that base two mile range and extend it out to eight miles if you chose to do so. Okay? Or you can skip the computer altogether and just have what's called the EchoView host. The EchoView host will pick up your wireless readings within 660 feet 
and you don't need a computer or anything. And the other cool thing about the EchoView host is it's an eight to one ratio. So I'll be able to pick up eight instruments on one EchoView host. So you may ask, well, what happens when I get to meter number nine or 10 or 11? You'll just pick up a second EchoView host and you'll set it to a different channel ID and then you'll start your next group of eight instruments that would talk wirelessly to an EchoView host. So the easy way to remember this, this one is about a range of two football fields and this one is a range of two miles. Okay. So there's some more information on the EchoView host. Again, real-time readings from eight mesh wireless devices, no computer or software required. This is the uh, slide on the Raylink 3s. Again, they would connect your wireless instruments to a host computer that also has a Raylink 3. Two to eight miles is your range. And you need to have your meters and your radios synced up on the same network ID for them to communicate because in your city there are multiple departments using wireless ray systems and we can cascade that data together. So what we'll do is uh, make sure you touch base with the other departments and kind of coordinate once you get into using the wireless feature of your instruments so that the different departments are on different channels so that you don't get communication errors. If you have any instruments that are set to the same channel or network ID, there can be some communication issues. So we just want to kind of talk through that in advance and make sure you're on different channel numbers, network IDs, or PAN IDs if you're using EchoView host. Okay. Then you also need ProRay Guardian. That's the software you would use for the long range wireless. And your, your uh, software license would be pre-programmed with the number of instruments that you want to see. So it's not necessarily uh, specific serial numbers it's looking for. If you bought a software license to pick up four wireless instruments, it will pick up the first four wireless instruments that's presented to it. So it's not serial number specific, it's the number of wireless instruments that you've paid for. Okay. So it's real-time data monitoring for real-time decisions. Uh, ProRay Guardian is going to give you maps that you can use, so when you're connected to the internet, it's going to pull GPS down from the satellites and plot right where you are on a map, or you could use a site map. So if you had, uh, we call that an image overlay, if you had an overhead view of a chemical plant per se, and you guys are responding, you could bring up that overhead view of the plant and then physically park your meters where you've put them on scene. That way when a meter goes off and it pings your laptop computer, you'll see exactly which meter's in alarm and the location of that unit. Okay. Again, we've got cascade mode for sharing. So I'll just say out loud, I'm not an IT person and we'll need to get IT involved because it's very important that you have a static IP address when you want to share data between different departments. So if you get to that point and you want to be able to do that, just get with me again and we'll get with your IT person to establish the different blocks and check marks that need to be turned on in order to share data among departments. Um, ProRay Guardian also has a log view where you can bring up uh, a text uh, chart of your information or you can set it to show it to you in graph mode. So you can literally be looking at a live graph of your different gas detection readings on all the sensors that are in the instrument. And all of that happens through ProRate Guardian. So again, we'll, as you guys grow with your wireless instruments, we'll decide which way we're going. The EchoView host, which is a closed loop system, or the Raylink 3 mesh, and ProRate Guardian, which is the long range system.